This is the Hidden Killers podcast with Tony Bruschi. Featuring retired FBI special agent Jennifer Coffindaffer. When we're talking about the possibility of this being murder, because that's what, what she's being charged with. It, it's not, you know, vehicular manslaughter or something lesser. It's, it's murder. It, it feels like that might be a bit of an overstatement on this, considering she was there at the scene trying to give him mouth to mouth. And then she was found that way and found in a very um, hysteric state, according to a lot of the testimony. Um, not necessarily that of someone that you would, you know, think maybe you went out and tried to to truly murder your boyfriend. Let's take a listen to some of the testimony uh, from the first responders on that. What, if anything, were you advised uh, by your dispatch in regards to Miss Reed? Uh, we were dispatched that, or uh, can control that advise us that uh, she's making suicidal statements. And so based on that, what, if anything, did you or, or the other officers that you were on scene with do at that point? Um, I don't recall exactly who, but someone had called uh, Ms. Roberts to have Miss um, Reed come back to the scene, and we uh, section 12 there. So does that show anything that she's making suicidal statements? Is that showing a consciousness of guilt? Is that showing someone who's shocked by what just took place? What do you make out of that? That's exactly what it shows to me is consciousness of guilt. Uh, she is seeing all of this uh, play out and she realizes the consequences, I believe, of her actions, the fact she hit him and mm -hmm. the fact he died. Mm -hmm. I don't think she ever really realized he was going to die probably until she was laying on top of him and he was cold. Yeah. Uh, I think that was probably her first realization that this fight and this, this, you know, set of events uh, that had occurred the night b before didn't just result in her tapping him. It resulted in his death. So to your point, is that really murder? Is that second degree murder or was it by an accident? Yeah. And, you know, I, have said from the get-go and Yanetti, her attorney on tape said from the get-go this was an accident she didn't do anything on purpose mm -hmm. this was before they decided to go with this alternate narrative that she was framed yeah but i think for most people when you know the fact she was absolutely blitzed in terms of the amount yeah. of alcohol she mm -hmm. had consumed she had recalled that he was actually the last time she saw him was at the bar yeah she didn't even remember going to 34 fairview there will be testimony so yeah. when you add that up with all of this new information about her being suicidal in section 12 i mean she seemed very upset at the time but was she also just upset as to her actions and what she knew she did. Yeah, well, that that's an interesting point you just made there because if the last thing she remembers is seeing him at the bar, then she doesn't have any recollection of being in that car with him getting to the house. Uh, and that's the key place right here. And I know you were at the scene the other week. You got to see firsthand, this was by the road, uh, exactly how far the car would have gone forward. And then if it went in reverse, uh, which is what it looks like it likely did uh, for at that certain speed for that distance. And, and why would that have happened? And I think sometimes you, you go to the surface and go, well, she must have intended to hit him. But if you just think you got two drunk people, in somewhat of a quarrel of some sort, and she's saying, get out, I'm going to go, or whatever. It's not a crazy thought that maybe she drove forward a little bit, and maybe uh, she just went in reverse because she wanted to say something else to him. Or maybe there was something else she was going to give him that he left in the car. You know, go back, roll down the window, and you blah, 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 blah. I'm just speculating here. Maybe she reversed. Well, where did it go? She's drunk as hell doesn't necessarily see where he is, thinks maybe he went into the house, drives away, has no recollection of of hitting him and, and might not at all because of being blackout drunk. Uh, but that to me seems like another possible theory on this as to how she reversed, why she reversed, not necessarily in a malice way of trying to kill her boyfriend, but in a way of just drunken argument and then being unaware that that a strike had actually happened. Well, Tony, I can't agree with your exact scenario, but I see how that could be, uh, you know, considered by many. Uh, the problem is she reversed going 24 miles an hour. Mm -hmm. 
<laughs> so this was but a if, but quick, if you're angry fast, and you're like I got a blah 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 back at you, you hit the gas. I I, I could see that being a possibility. Yeah, I, and and the other part is, and again, this partially has to do with the order of proof. Mm -hmm. I think one of the biggest issues is going to be, uh, in terms of how this prosecution is presenting its case, the issue that is a huge issue is why didn't they present chronologically what happened? In other words, they should be showing the Karen Reed tapes Mm -hmm. uh, the voicemails, the hate she had for him uh, during that car ride to set this all up. Mm -hmm. It's so out of order, right? Sure. You really have where they're, you know, they, in terms of the order of proof, where they speak to John O'Keefe's brother and his uh, sister-in-law, Aaron. Mm -hmm. And, and there's no sort of predication for all of that. Now we're going backwards again going to when he was hit. But what about setting that all up, showing the anger she had? Mm -hmm. And also recall that as the alcohol is wearing off, as everything is happening, I think the picture became more clear as to what she had done yep. uh, in her own mind. It was all kind of, you know, how the pieces come together. Mm -hmm. um, and I think that's what happened. I, I think the reason it's a more confusing story than it needs to be. It really needed to start off with his children taking the stand mm -hmm. and saying we were woken up and, and then you go into uh, why they were woken up. They were woken up to call. Who were they woken up to call? They, she wanted to call uh, Jim McCabe and Carrie Roberts mm -hmm. to go look for John O'Keefe. And they could have explained this whole story. Yeah. And then you play the tapes of Karen Reed screaming, you know, I hate you. I effing hate you. Mm -hmm. And then you go to him being found. And then you go to, I hit him, I hit him, I hit him. And it makes more sense. We're literally going backwards in a story. Yeah, I can see it. And that would be confusing <laughs> to a jury, especially a jury that, you know, has said they don't know that much about the case uh, to to not necessarily know otherwise, because in their minds, it's going to be in this other order, even if told otherwise. That's just how our minds will work. Sick of the ads? We opt to. Start listening with no commercials now and get access to all of our episodes in advance of everyone else. Become a True Crime Today Premium Plus subscriber on Apple Podcasts. Search True Crime Today Premium Plus on Apple Podcasts or go to our podcast page and sign up now. True Crime Today Premium Plus. Sign up now.